How to calibrate an audiometer with an ACS calibration and analysis system. Today I've selected out a, a Benson CCA 200 Mini. Now the ACS system is used in the manufacturing of this audiometer so we have the manufacturer's complete cooperation in programming in to the ACS software and analysis system exactly how the manufacturer specifies that this audiometer has to be calibrated. There is no shortcuts, there is no close enoughs, there is no decisions for the technician to make other than be able to plug it in because the ACS system has full control of the system and will calibrate it according to the ANSI ISO standards. First thing we have to do is connect the audiometer to the ACS system. We're going to start that by simply disconnecting the headphones and the patch cord that goes into the audiometer at that point. We're going to bring them around and we're going to plug it into the side. Now here's a little bit better uh, view of the jack paddle on the side of the ACS system. Um, left and right, the patch cords and the headphones. I don't think that's been too difficult so far. We're going to take the patch cords, which are the other end connected right here. I'm going to bring this around and connect that into the audiometer where we've just taken out the headphones. The reason we're doing that is because the ACS system does also an electrical analysis of the entire audiometer system. It not only does the acoustical portion but it does the electrical analysis also. A little difficult to do that with just a sound level meter. I thought I'd give you a little bit better idea. Um, here, if you wanted to look at the output of that audiometer or the signal on the, on the audiometer, switch it over and go to the signal analyzer. This is all part of the ACS system. If you wanted to take a, a, a different look at the, at the spectrum analysis of the, of the, um, of the signal itself, well, the pulse rate, the rise and fall, whatever, it's in there. Next thing we're going to do is take the USB connection that was plugged into the Benson PC of running the hearing testing and bring it in and plug it into the side of the ACS system. So the ACS unit can take complete control of the audiometer. Now, we're, we're ready to go. All I have to do is come over here, click on this little icon of the ear. This is ACS, and there is the opening screen to the ACS calibration system. Now, you know, I've showed you before, you can enter new customers, or select a customer out of there, or new audiometer. But we've been working with this unit right here, the Benson CCA 200. As a matter of fact, we know that that's the one because right there is the serial number. So the only thing I have to do now is to come up and calibrate. This little box is checked because we know that we have direct control of that audiometer. We've selected that out. Here's the COM port. We may change that around a little bit. Well, that's a little later on. We'll talk about that. I can go back and test the connection, but I've already done that. I have the option here, user control, fully control, which is 90% of the time where it's going to be. We put some of this other stuff in. Remember, this is used in manufacturing. Get a little bit more sophisticated with the system. You can change it around a little bit to suit yourself. Now, the system knows that the only thing it's going to do is calibrate headphones. It's not going to do inserts or high frequency or bone. But, oh, it's going to do the electrical test because the ACS system, as I said before, it analyzes everything about that audiometer. A little difficult to do that electrical with just a sound level meter. We know the rest of the things aren't in there. Here we have the option that I could just measure only that audiometer and change nothing, or I can measure and adjust the information, which is 99% of the time what you're going to be doing, unless you're going to use it as a daily biological calibrator, or just a check to find out whether your audiometer is in calibration. Okay, we're ready to calibrate and we're ready to start the test. Now it's asking me, do I want to continue an old test or do I want to start a new test? Most of the time, 
you're going to start a new test unless there was a correction or you from reason that you wanted to get out of the old one I'll click it on over here it asks for some help by saying put the microphone and coupler on the right headphone which I have done press OK and away we go now I've done something here to make this so that you could see that we do some automatic calibration and you see right away the instrument is coming back and telling us you're 10 dB out of calibration that's pretty unusual for an audiometer to be that much uh, out of calibration right off you'd certainly want to go back in and check the patch cords and check the connections and do everything but we had check the headphones maybe you have a wrong set of headphones on there but I know what I've done here so I'm not going to continue on looking around here I topped the I tipped the coupler off of there so I could get it out of calibration because I wanted to show you this screen when I said the ACS system has everything under control you can see what I'm saying I'm gonna say continue on anyway and we've taken a out of calibration by 10.9 dB and corrected it back into one tenth of a decibel and I don't know what I've got on the rest of these but it'll correct it out it's minus 0.8 so it's going to correct it back to 0.2 because oh, here's another one because we've set that I have set this audiometer calibration system up to give me a warning if it's over six decibel out of calibration I, same problem I'm not going to pursue what's wrong here I'm going to push on continue and it's correcting that calibration and bringing it back in now remember this is going to record on your pre and post record on the calibration sheet so be sure that you've checked everything out if you want to you can go back and check this later on to make sure that it's you ha there was not a mistake made somewhere along the line so we're rolling right along I'm doing nothing except sitting here watching the screen the same as you are the only thing I need is a cup of coffee and I'm all set At one time when we were doing calibration to some clinical equipment um, in a, a box store when we got to the particular portion on electrical we said that was hot dog and coke time because the system just had to run itself out that calibration was very extensive and it took about you know took about an hour hour and a half in order to run through every function of the audiometer and here we are it's going to ask ask me for some more help by simply saying put the coupler on the left headphone I've done that and away we go like I have mentioned several times the audiometer calibration system knows exactly what has to be done it never makes a mistake on the procedure that's needed in order to calibrate this audiometer to an exhaustive ANSI calibration standard Now, we've done this audiometer several times, maybe, while I'm shooting this video. So we're not out of calibration very much. You'll notice the same thing when you're in the field. I think the biggest thing that I would look at when I was doing calibration was that <laughs> what, the, what the person did to the audiometer before, in the calibration before I was there. Many years ago, we used to charge an extra to do a calibration if somebody else did it the year previous to that and here simply checking the distortion in the left headphone now because we do the electrical analysis also we'll go back and check this distortion electrically also and record it So we're done with the adjustment of the calibration type thing and the rest of it is the analysis. So here's at 500, simply going up, intensity is 500, frequency is 500, the 
intensity is 100 dB. The tone is on. It's in the left ear. Let's change it over to a 1K frequency. Still at 100 dB. The tone is on. Well, you're going to see something now in a minute. Oh, turned it off because it wants to see the rise and the fall. And if you've noticed down over here, it's done the crosstalk over into the right ear. Coming back in and now checking the crosstalk in the left ear. We'll just sit here and kind of watch this go through. and on to linearity. Now I have this set up because I feel it's best to do linearity in increments of 5 dB. Now if you feel that you want to do them in 10 dB steps, that's user preference and you can go back and change that whichever way that you want. But as you can see Doing this four or five days times a day, six times a day, doing school audiometers. Gets to be kind of a bore if I had to write down every one of these numbers or push a button every time I came to that spot. Here, I'm sitting back, I'm filling out the calibration certificate or the tag that goes under the audiometer that says it was properly calibrated. I'm wiping the window down in the sound room. I'm talking to the nurse. Maybe I'm selling or something, spirometry, vision screeners, whatever you feel like doing because all you're doing is just monitoring the equipment. If something really goes wrong, it's going to beep and shut itself down and say, I can't cope with it. And another thing that you'll see at the bottom here is we're driving that attenuator down to 10 dB. Most of the calibration certificates that I see coming back in from the field um, that with the tech with the sound level meter, most of them will stop at around 20 unless they're in a very, very quiet environment because getting down to 10 dB acoustically with a meter is a pretty tough chore unless the environment is such that it will tolerate that. Now we could go down to minus 10 dB if we wanted to because the crossover on the audio of the ACS system allows us to cross over from doing an acoustical portion for what portion we want to and then doing the electrical and the bottom thresholds totally within the specifications of ANSI. And the specifications of the audiometer manufacturer. And now we're done with linearity. And the only reason we have to do that, this is a single channel audiometer. It only has one oscillator. So it's not necessary to check both the right and the left attenuation because it's all off of the same one. And there we are. Pulse is done. We do one more little thing that we come back in that we've added into this because we feel that checking the hand switch on a screening type audiometer in the industrial application is one of the most important things that we're going to do. So I simply am going to take and connect it back into the back of the unit back over there, the, the patient response button. I put it back into that, into the plug in the very back that says continuity. I'm going to click on start and I'm going to press the button. Now I know I have a successfully operating patient response button. If they have trouble with their hearing testing, it's one of the first things you want to check. 
done. Now, the test sequence is complete. All right. We've done everything except room acoustics. And I can simply do that by taking the microphone out of the coupler, placing it in the sound room, and pressing on. Let's do that. I'm in a pretty quiet environment over here, so we might be able to get by with it. But this red line here indicates the OSHA criteria for the allowable background noise levels. I'll simply start the test. And there's the background noise levels, and that's me talking. I used to be able to whistle. But you can see if I'm quiet, we'll get that. Done. Again done. Save the results. Now, if I want to take a look at it, I can come back up here or print it. Here's an area putting in notes. We can take and put in. I can edit them. I can put new ones in. I can do whatever I want to back over there. Or if I want to take a look at something in the output level, there it is. But I'm going to, let's say, view the certificate. I can select out here what I want to print. I also want to print out the pre-recording. Okay, and there's the calibration sheet. And there it's documented those spots that were out of calibration. All right, sorry I can't bring this over to the middle to show you, but that's what your calibration sheet. It has everything on it, every possible function that that audiometer can do. All right, all right. Thanks for watching. If you have some questions, give me a call. I'll put it up on the screen.